So in this episode, we have a special guest talking everything networking. Let's get into it. Welcome to the show. Event Masters. You need to listen to this. If you want to throw bigger and better events, learn how to monetize and land bigger acts. Yeah, this is where you can learn how to do that. Event Masters. Welcome to episode eight of Event Masters. I'm your host, Dylan Schinholzer. Alongside of me, got it wrong again, Patrick <laughs> Van Dusen. What's up, man? Hey, hey. Networking. Uh, it's the networking. week of networking. We got a guest. You guys don't have to stare at our faces and our podcast viewers only listen. Or view, I keep saying viewers. Uh, podcast listeners only have to listen to Patrick and I. We have a special guest in this virtual building. Um, and I'm gonna let Patrick take it away. This is his friend, his cohort, one of our friends here at ViewStub. So Patrick, go ahead and introduce our guest. Yes, excited. So we got Jason from Hio Social. Um, it's awesome to actually have him as our first guest. We've known him for about a year and a half. It's actually funny the way we met was through Michelle McNabb. That's gonna be a guest on the show uh, here in a few weeks. Uh, so we met Michelle and then she was like, you have to meet Jason with Hio, networking, networking, networking. We're like, we love networking, right? So then it got introduced and um, Jason and, and Spencer and I have just been pretty much internet buddies, um, you know, working together and whatnot for like a year. And uh, it's been great. So when we started, they were like, hey, let's bring on guests on the show. I'm like, we got to do a networking one. And then Jason in instantly popped on the show. I texted him and I was like, Jason, you want to be on our show? <laughs> so it was awesome. And, and fast forward to now. He is here. Jason, what's up, man? Uh, how's it going, guys? It's hey. going. It's going. Welcome to uh, Event Masters. We appreciate your time today. And uh, I know this is really going to be a cool episode. I know all of us are, are big fans and everyone watching is big fans of networking and how it plays out in person, how it plays out virtually, how it plays out in general. Um, we're going to be talking all about it today. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. So uh, Patrick, why don't you kick us off? Let's get, or actually let's, before we go yeah. to Patrick, let's, let's go get a right short to bio Jason. Of Jason. Yeah, let's go right yeah, to Jason. Jason, Jason. Yeah, a little bit of like, you know, who you are, how HIO came about, and you know, what, what got you into the networking niche in events? Sure, sure. So uh, when we first started the company uh, called uh, HIO, it was, HIO actually stands for Hit It Off. So we spanned the entire relationship journey from hitting it off in person or virtually, uh, taking the relationship digital by swapping info, contact info, socials, documents, uh, and then we have a whole suite of follow-up features to let people uh, get back in touch with one another. And when we first started it, it was just something that we thought would be used at events kind of casually. And as we started to go on, we realized that uh, event organizers really wanted a solution like this for their in-person events. Uh, when COVID hit, we pivoted and did virtual events uh, and stood up a, a virtual events platform. And most recently pivoted into a space to support other event uh, companies and their organizers by rolling out a networking as a service product that's been uh, wildly popular, just kind of growing like wildfire right now. And so uh, just excited to be here. Um, as you kind of said in the intro, we've been friends over a year now and um, always enjoy your company and uh, love that intro video, I must say, too. I got to kind of view that backstage and I was like, smiling ear to ear at how cool it was. <laughs> yeah, well, awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I mean, how many networking events have you think you've done so far, like hosted or been a part of? So we've either, we've easily hosted uh, over 2,500 networking Ooh. events on the platform, yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't, although, although a lot of customers try to get me to go to their, their specific events, I, I've only probably been to a couple hundred of those. Mm. But, you know, in person um, was, was really difficult to get to every single event. And it's cool now that People have been using us in the virtual space. Uh, you can just pop in for five or ten minutes, meet some of their guests, and then pop back out. So uh, you can you can definitely get more touch points with virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, fun fact, you know, view stuff or event masters would not be here if it wasn't for a networking component of a event. Um, so that, that's how I met Spencer, the the co-founder of view stuff, was through a networking event. Imagine, like, so much stuff just comes out of these events. So. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. They put a value of, you know, obviously you guys are have partnered now, but like when you go to a networking event, the average value of each person you meet, if you ever end up doing business, is about forty six hundred dollars. 
So you just never know who's next to you, what you might do. You know, if you meet someone a couple years late down, a couple years later down the road, uh, you may end up going into business or, or you know, having a romantic uh, endeavor. So you just never know what networking will, uh, what will come from networking. Yeah, and they say your network is your net worth. So, um, and even even Dylan will tell you uh, here. You know what we do over at ViewStub so much work and clientele and partnerships have just come from networking. That's where your best customers come from. So it's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that we always say to people is when you're networking, just kind of turn off like any ask, turn off any, any, per, anything that you want, right? Just listen, just be open. You know, the worst thing that could ever happen if you're networking and, and you don't end up getting a contract or going into business with someone is you make a new friend, right? So <laughs> showing up authentic and, uh, and trying to hit it off with someone, find that common, that common thread that bonds you and just see where the relationship will go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you just have a conversation with someone at an event, you know, if you have nothing in common, even if like they're growing a business that has nothing to do with you, or there's like literally no opportunity to move forward, you can still at least connect with someone and share like the same challenges and feelings that they're going through right now. Yeah. And, and you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head because that's what I was going to ask you is like, so what's your like top t uh, trick or tip for it, but you hit on the, you, you beat me to it, to be honest. And it's that, don't talk about yourself kind of thing. I'm, I'm a big proponent in that too. I, I when I go to network, I, I think I feel, I sometimes leave conversations with people not knowing my name at times. Cause I'm, I'm always asking mm -hmm. questions. I want to know you. Cause yeah. I like, if I feel like if I put the ball in your court, that's relying on you to then call me and all of that. I've always just wanted to learn more about people. And I take that time in networking. Uh, and I always tell Patrick and I was, and he agrees and our team, you give people a reason to talk about themselves. They love it. Um, and that's mm -hmm. great. That's really the, and that makes networking easier. I think a lot of people, is there anything advice on uh, like for folks who do struggle with networking? Cause there's not like we're us three people. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this are, are, are charismatic enough to be able to carry conversations and networking and, and go into those environments. Do you have anything for the folks who aren't that way? Yeah. Uh, just a general tip. Like no one wants to feel like they're being sold anything when they're meeting a new person. So, you know, I always say first seek to understand and then seek to be understood. So you go into uh, a networking event and it's all about them. You know, what brought you here tonight? You know, do you know anyone else? Did you come with anyone? Um, the, the, the people that kind of bounce from person to person, what do you do for a living? Nope. Nope. And then they just, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? I don't even ask people what they do for a living because honestly, you're not going to make a sale right in front of me, right? Unless you're selling something out of your pockets. So it's like, what do you do for fun? What brought you here? Do you usually come to these types of events? You know, once you start to build a foundation of relationship, then you're going to find out on LinkedIn or some other time what they do, or it might come up in conversation. But I, I would definitely always lead with find out who that person is. You might make a great friendship out of that person. Don't care one bit about what they do, but Unfortunately, people go so strong and they're just churning and burning. What do you do for a living? Nope, you don't fit my goals here for tonight. And there are some <laughs> goals in networking that you could have, but mm -hmm. no one wants to just feel like they're being burned through really quickly to get to someone's target market. Mm -hmm. That that whole uh, here's my business card. Here's my business card. Here's my business card uh, approach. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. I walk home with like 52 business cards and throw them away. So, uh, <laughs> well, you're saying you don't walk into the event and just throw your business cards in the, up in there? Oh, I, I actually what I do is I walk in, I slam them all down on the table and say, I'm here, take one, call me and I walk out. That's how I network. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, no, so that's super. So uh, it's, let me let me ask you this, because uh, I want to segue in this into events and from organizer point of view. Uh, do you have any do's of don't or do's or don'ts? Because that comes from like a actual networking, being the person at the networking event. Uh, connecting, meeting the Patricks and the Jasons of the world, and and then going on after the event to connect. Now, as an event organizer, um, do you have any do's and don'ts for us as organizers putting on networking events that you've seen uh, either virtually, in person, all of it that you've seen better success with if they build it right or strategically think about it right? I think a lot of people just think networking is, I want to give some drinks and people will do what they want with that. Uh, and I think there's more intentional ways. So I'd love to hear your your opinion on that. But I think you hit it right on the head. It's like more intentional. A lot of people, a lot of events that I see, they're like six hour events with one break and they call that break the networking break. 
right? The, the networking half hour. But people are checking their phones. They have emails. They have busy lives. They have children. Uh, they have to use the restroom. So when it comes to virtual events, building in more more frequency of networking to allow these random collisions, to allow people to be in a lobby and connect, the, the more downtime, the better. We've all been to in-person conferences or in-person events where you know it's that time where you're at the bar, it's that time where you're checking your phone and someone sits down next to you. Those random collisions that really you're in a, a vulnerable space and you're like, hey, you know, what are you what what are you up to? What brought you here today? Those types of of uh, breaks, I think, are just so necessary for building relationships. And unfortunately, everyone likes to go heavy content. And I think that if the more you break those up, keeping forty five minute segments. 15 minute networking, 45 segment, 15 networking. Um, the more you can stagger those, I think the better because human beings are social creatures. They want that time that they want to connect with other people. They want to see what's new. They want to hear new ideas or advice or information. So uh, I would just say more frequency of networking, the better. Yeah, that makes, that makes tons of sense. Uh, I, I always joke like it's an eight hour event and we have that one hour networking social le lesson um, and or the session. Uh, but and you touched on it there. I think the value of networking, and, and I want to segue into my next question, just because uh, this is me asking as a human to someone who's smarter than me. Um, you know, with the in-person environment, I say this all the time, there's big differences between virtual networking and in-person networking. And you touched on it because there's a serendipity of in-person encounters that just can't happen virtually, right? That guy you sit down at the bar and you happen to hear him talk and he ends up being the CEO of a major corporation or just that, like you said, you put your phone down and sit outside and then someone else comes and sit next to you. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, you're like the VP of sales over at this company or X, right? And so the serendipity of that, do you have you seen that be able to play itself out as much in this virtual environment? Or is there any way that you can intentionally try to create those moments or is it possible? It is possible. It's actually something we're, we're solving right now with, with the product that we're rolling out. But the the virtual landscape historically has not because what you know when you look across a room or you have these moments where you're posted up at the bar or something they do lend themselves to a random nature uh, a guest list is not so random as you're just scrolling through it so you you do find people kind of headhunting with a guest list uh, we're baking in you know a shuffle feature show me someone new show me someone interesting uh, and then they'll just pop up in, in a random video collision with you. So I, I do think there's ways to be intentional about showing people they wouldn't otherwise connect with. Specifically when it comes to networking and meeting new people and building relationships, when you have um, some products out there like, like you know, networking apps and things like that, when they're only like swipe-esque, right? Swipe left, swipe, swipe right. You think about your friends. Not all your friends are the most beautiful people or you know, don't have any flaws. So just networking based on appearance is kind of ridiculous to me personally. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like to, I want to randomly serve you up someone that is thoughtful, is considerate, is collaborative, is upbeat and positive, uh, rather than just serving you up someone that I think you might be physically attracted to or something like that. So um, we're building in tools to make networking more contextual and less transactional. That's amazing. Yeah. Very fine point. Yeah, that, I mean, and you hit the nail on the head because, like, that's what I think organizers, especially in this virtual world, struggle with is how how to create, and then because they're always trying to recreate that in person environment, which is a whole other conversation. But how can are there ways? Is there abilities? Are there apps out there uh, like Hio and what you're got what you're building? And we will definitely get into that uh, in here in a, in a couple minutes. But um, that will allow and maybe create some of that serendipity, as they call it. Um, around the randomness, because you are right when, you know, with a lot of these networking apps that I think both Patrick and I, and of course you have seen, it's like a list and then they create their little bio and then I can, you know, I can choose if I want to network and network and network with them from there. But they strategically wrote that bio that says they're great and, you know, all of this good stuff. But uh, like you said, you know, uh, if I'm just swiping right, basically, it's I'm looking at the surface level of things when most serendipitous moments come from just that random, you have no idea, never thought it would happen, never would have happened uh, unless for that random occasion. So um, it's and, cool to hear and see that it can be played out online. Yeah, and and uh, you know they happen in, in these situations where you let your, lar let your guard down and mm. friendships come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And so you know to be able to serve you up someone we think you might be interested in regardless of all those things uh, is something that we're really proud of. And we think that people will um, will be able to hit it off in a, in a more intentional way moving forward. Yeah, I'm excited for that. 
I'm, ex I'm excited to, to even hear more about it in this episode. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's go, go for it. Patrick. Oh no, you yeah, go. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I want to, I want to break this down a little bit because we're obviously still in this little weird time of, of virtual hybrid in person. Are we going back? Are we not? Um, I got, I have a question because I have my own philosophy on this and feedback and I love, love talking to other people who are smarter than me. Um, how do you see networking from a virtual to in-person environment, a hybrid networking playing itself out, right? Because right now we're all virtual. Now we know what that looks like. We know what in-person looks like. We're going to talk and collaborate. But for us event throwers and event producers and alike that are putting on hybrid events, how, how can we or should we be integrating and bridging the gap between our virtual and in-person more so? Is that, have you thought about that and how that looks oh, yeah. for your world? I mean, a lot of our thoughts are centered around this hybrid, this hybrid future. So I think that when, you know, when most people, most adults are vaccinated in the U.S. and when uh, people start getting in person again, I think there's going to be a huge rush back. Personally, I think oh, yeah. there's a huge rush. And then I think people are going to realize, you know, I like sitting in my office and doing this, you know, more conveniently. So I do believe in a total hybrid world, but I think there's going to be a rush at the end of summer, early fall in, in terms of in person. But I think I think most companies would be smart to be obviously they are to be um, planning for this hybrid world. And I think that connecting the connecting the attendee list from in person and virtual is going to be key. There's got to be continuity between those individuals. You might you might be in person and have a phone that you know um, you just you just stand next to someone for a couple minutes, and all of us you know you don't even have to take it out. You don't have to take a business card out. You just keep your phone in your pocket. You shake hands with someone, you talk to them, uh, and then later on after the event, we just prompt you and we say, you know, hey, did you meet Dylan? Yes, I did. Do you want to connect with them? What do you want to share? Um, so there's smart ways to do it in person that, that we're looking at. But then there's also this, this kind of hybrid world where maybe I'm at home and I also want to maybe talk to someone who's in person. Maybe I want to get insights. Um, and people in person also have you know, like the Snapchat feel like they can, they can, I think there's going to be more collages. There's going to be more um, live streams, not just from the initial video feed, but also patching in users who can add content to the video as well and give their perspective. So I think that um, not only will the participant at home get more out of it, right? Obviously the person in person is going to get a lot of value, but they might eventually be able to contribute to the live stream in a, in a new and different way, I think, moving forward. Yeah, no, I, I, I that's, like that that's a lot. A, yeah, no, that's I was like, yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. And you do that mm -hmm. little that little trick of did I like if I if I meet you at a uh, an event and after the event it says, hey, did you meet Jason? Uh, here's his contact or take his contact. That uh, if you if you're working on that man, that's uh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, little mm -hmm. little things like that to just pr uh, you know promote and and uh, create better environments for people to network and be you know be more intentional about it and bridging the gap between you know virtual and hybrid instead of or virtual and in person instead of just having uh, two different events going on. Basically, it's hey, I'm creating one big one. Uh, it just happens to yeah. be two different ways to experience it. And obviously, we always we all know networking is right up there with the content, uh, they neck and neck, depending on really what your true outcome is, um, as yeah. important. So, uh, you know, organizers that are watching this going forward, you got to think about not just can you live stream it out, but can you bridge the gap? Can you create mm -hmm. uh, less separation between in person and virtual, especially with networking and things like that. And then I think that's going to be a really interesting future to see and, and how that plays out because yeah. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> imagine, uh, imagine if you stuff did it right. You had like an Instagram takeover like feature where you have this mobile app and you're streaming it to a million people, but you have 30 people because of their specific ticket or they're inclined to be social in nature. The timer's like, hey, in five seconds, you're going to take over the feed for everybody right all across the world. Uh, and you allow them to show their own perspective. Oh, my gosh. I can see that. That may be a real but yeah, I was like, like so many good things, but so much could go wrong. Uh, yeah, so I totally get that. Uh, yeah, it could, that could be interesting. But nonetheless, uh, I think you're you're 100 percent right. I think that I'm excited for the future of this connecting technology to in person. I'm a big believer in in person will always win. Um, but that virtual side and connecting the two for the folks who were like, man, I'm not leaving my office anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Why would I? Uh, and still be able to give them the same levels of access uh, to the different parts of an event from their home. Now they're missing out on the, the, the serendipity, the inspiration, the impact, the motivation that comes from it. But 
um, they still get to have that experience. So I'm excited for that. Um, I see the bridge even. I see the bridge like you, you can connect uh, easily. We already do this, connect people for one-on-one -on -one video chats right now during an event. So imagine if I'm live and there's still the same networking hour, I might be live connecting on my phone to someone who's at home and they maybe say, oh, how is it? Oh, I was going to go, but you know, my daughter got sick. I would have loved to be there. And I think that both people can connect from two different realms uh, quite easily. I think mm -hmm. activity will be interesting, but I think hybrid is definitely here to stay for the next five years. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, so I, I have a question cause uh, you know, I, it's as a, as an event person, we live and die by the two days, three days that we're there. Yeah. Um, what are you, what is your take on ex uh, networking outside of the event environment and how important would that be before the event, during the event, which is what most people are thinking when we're saying networking at events, but networking can start before the event during and long after, um, if done right, do you guys, or do you have any insight? knowledge uh, or ideas around how they could just implement in more networking almost into their community and then also give them an in-person event where they could do all of that kind of that blended the blended mentality uh, I, I have two two comments on this the first is those are the best kinds of networking right like when mm -hmm. you go to an after party because networking is just kind of like two people here and the exchange of information but what you just described is actually relationship building Relationship building comes in many forms, um, but one of them is shared experiences. If we've went mm -hmm. through something together, that's a shared experience. That's bonded us, right? It's kind of galvanized the relationship to some extent. So I love when there's after parties or you're doing something before, there's a lunch and learn, you're next to someone, you're chatting. Uh, those are things that I, it's almost like team building activities. So those are really great for quote networking, but I'd rather say relationship building because I think I think that's excellent. Um, and the second piece is how, how do we do this that, that you brought up? The second piece that I think about that is can we, and we do this at HIO, we actually put an embeddable widget directly over the website uh, or the registration site. So the same product that lives on your virtual event page will also live on your registration page and it stays there in perpetuity. So you never feel like you missed a connection. You can start networking before, during, or even after the show. Um, and those relationships that you make, oftentimes the, the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to tackle this problem of networking in events in general, not just virtual, but in general, is you'd go to an event, you'd meet 10 people with you know some, some networking app, and then you always had to export those people to a CSV file and just mm -hmm. try to get them out of the app and then delete the app. And so we wanted our product to be reusable. Your contacts do not go away. Your connections do not go away. After the event, we actually have a whole host of follow-up features, pre-scripted follow-up emails you can send. Uh, you can propose meetings, set reminders, take notes, even give people compliments on their, on their uh, soft skills, right, their EQ. And so we, uh, we want to enable you to get back in person. As I said earlier, we span the relationship journey from hitting it off in person or digital taking the relationship to a digital nature, sharing information. And then that, that re relationship piece is so important, the follow-up features enable you to do that. So we, we believe that personal relationships drive everything in life and in business. And we allow you to manage these personal relationships at scale. So you can follow up with 50 people in like five minutes rather than 50 different emails every single time. You just hit follow-up email to who, to Patrick, it's sent. Uh, so it's, it, we're making it super easy. We're making it contextual again, not transactional. Um, and, and we just think that um, if, if done right, uh, it could be a home run and it could make people actually have better, deeper, stronger relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that. And I was done yeah. such a great job doing that because my, my next point was going to be if someone because all a lot of event organizers add networking, but they don't really consider what tools for networking. They just maybe just go grab like a a network, a basic networking app, or they just make a lounge for networking. But as an event organizer, if I'm looking to take my networking at my event to the next level, of course, Hio is a great product. And, and I would love to hear more on what Hio did. But what are some things that event organizers should consider as far as the feature set wise, right? Because the follow up is something huge that the is huge for the attendee, the organizer should be thinking about things like this, you know, like, hey, instead of just a networking app, really dig in and what's in that app to really build that networking experience to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say early on, you know, we meet organizers and now event companies as a whole, but when we were, when we were directly targeting organizers, we would meet a lot that said, and they're, they're on 
the whole end of this opposite ends of the spectrum, they would say, I have networking. I said, oh, you have networking on Zoom? How do you have networking on Zoom? They're like, people just throw their LinkedIn URL right into the chat. I'm like, that is not networking. That is not relationship building. That's not enabling people for a follow-up, getting them back together. Uh, and then we have people who really are on the leading edge of trying to provide valuable, um, valuable networking opportunities. Those are people who are, they understand that there's the, been this emergence of an event tech stack. Prior to 2020, you could do virtual events, but only the true professionals had an event tech stack. Now people are mm -hmm. like, I really like StreamYard and I could probably pair that up with this other piece. And, and so we're seeing like this, this new a la carte sort of uh, event being put together. And if these products can work seamlessly and generate a better experience overall for the end user, that's a win-win. And that's why we made this massive pivot to providing networking as a service because we, we thought about it and we thought, well, the thing that we do better than anyone else is this networking. So why are we doing video? Why are we thinking about doing ticketing? Why don't mm -hmm. we just do what we're best at and do that for everyone? That's a, that's a fine point. There's always that argument mm -hmm. and debate that we always see on our end of things for all in one versus getting two or three platforms that mastered that element and putting those together versus the all in one platforms who are, when you chase 15 rabbits, you can't catch any of them kind of thing. Uh, they, mm -hmm. It's kind of, they become a jack of all trades instead of a master of one. I mean, I think that's kind of the approach it sounds like you're taking is, look, I'm going to master networking. All my efforts and energy are going to go into how can I make people connect better and then add that as an add on to platforms like a view stub and others out there that says, look, I'm going to be an accoutrement of sorts. Yeah, uh, your side dish, but I dominate this space and that's what I want to be able to provide, because I think that's uh, a lot of the issues I see is folks say, yeah, I got networking. Do you though? Just because they yeah. can connect with each other, like maybe one on one, is that actually networking um, or or things like that? But I want—I know Patrick has a couple of uh, last questions. I want to ask just once again. I think I'm being selfish here, but hopefully it helps other people. Uh, <laughs> do you have or have you seen? And obviously, I know this answer is always it depends. But have you seen any sort of more valuable types of networking than others? There's a lot out here in this virtual space. There's the one on one. There's this the round table. There's the cocktail spatial network working that is really interesting and there's there's other formats have you seen uh with all of your data one that stands out more as beneficial less beneficial do they all work is there any take on that i th i think um i, I don't like, it's all I, of it I, I, well i don't think i don't think there's really like a clear uh company that is providing networking in a really efficient manner because again networking is a journey so no one's setting you up for managing these connections ongoing. You know, unfortunately, it's actually HIO. Uh, I hate to make a shameless plug there, but it, it's HIO that allows you to span that journey. But I think I think some people do a really great job of creating environments where people can meet one on one. They can meet in a group. Not everyone mm -hmm. wants to take that risk to meet with someone one on one for 15 straight minutes. Uh, we have sure. found that six minutes and 40 seconds is the most ideal amount of time to spend. Mm -hmm with a stranger uh, for any one-on-one -on -one engagement. So we were capping our one-on-ones at seven minutes, six minutes and 40 seconds, and then 20 seconds for, hey, we should connect sometime. Uh, but 15 minutes, you know, you really have to limit the initial engagement, right? People can't be on for, for 15 straight minutes with, with any one person. And, and that really goes to diversifying the number of opportunities you have for networking at events, back to that original point of, of the frequency getting that dosage and intensity up of networking sessions. Because what if you get cornered for 15 mm -hmm. minutes, one person who really wants to tell you all about their business, you've just squandered <laughs> your one opportunity in eight hours to, to talk to people, to build relationships. So, you know, definitely sprinkling in, I think um, I, I haven't found any that really do it the way that, that people want it to be done. I think that tables are a great way for introverts to consume, uh, yeah, consume um, a bit of information and kind of process it before they speak. They don't feel like they have to be on uh, right away. So I think tables is a really good way to dip your toes in if you're if you're an introvert. And I think that um, the one on one conversations out there that they're, they're much too long in terms of length. I think that if people brought it in under 10 minutes and just shuffled people around more frequently, that that people would much rather that. At Hio, we go a step further. Instead of plopping you, Patrick, into a meeting with me, and then great, okay, 
you're going in with Dylan. Um, after that meeting, we just take a little break. Hey, did you guys hit it off? Thumbs up or thumbs down, right? HIO stands for hit mm -hmm. it off. If it's thumbs up, we allow you to make a connection with that person, share information. So uh, we, we, again, we, we want the, the video and the relationships to work within your workflow and to kind of be more natural. So I would say that uh, folks like Remo have historically done a good job. Um, I really like, um, I really like the, just the, the table aspect in general. I think rally.video um, is doing some really interesting things, beautiful user interface as well. So I think that on a more casual um, kind of networking aspect is pretty cool. But again, everyone needs to get with this, what do I do next? We, we even thought, we had this theory of change. We said, well, what if we connected every event goer in the world with every other event goer in the world? Would that have been success for us? And the answer is flat out no. Unless we lead to better, deeper, stronger relationships, we have failed. Mm -hmm. To just have your connections, to just be friends on Facebook is not networking. We must do something <laughs> with that information, right? Exactly. No, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it just and it, and it sounds like just being, and I, I really like that tip uh, around the, the six minutes and that, that, that kind of data is stuff that you have that I think would help a lot of people um, oh, yeah. general, and, and how they build and design networking. A lot of thought needs to go into it. And I think my biggest takeaway from what you've said today is just flat out being intentional about networking, not having it because you think you need it kind of thing, but mm -hmm. understanding the value of it and then being <laughs> intentional with how you design it and give it and uh, curate it out to your audience and, and, and making sure. And then it goes into some of the stuff that Patrick and I always talk about on the show of you know, there's uh, to answer my own question of how which networking should I use for my event. I think it goes back to asking <laughs> asking my attendees what they think and what they feel and what they would feel most comfortable about doing. But um, yeah, I think that's my biggest you know my biggest takeaway for me today, man, is just flat out being more intentional. Whether it's you, the person networking, and or the event organizer, uh, being intentional about your networking, not just having it to have it mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and things like that. So. <laughs> One thing I'll just say before we close is um, just back to the original point. If you get busy collecting friends and having friendships, having friendly conversations, eventually we know friends will do anything for us and we'll do anything for our friends. That includes doing business with them. If you're busy about building solid foundational relationships with people, not asking for a darn thing right up front and over time adding value to them, and then maybe one day you realize, hey, we, we could do business together, right? Um, I have many friendships like that, that that span all different industries. So if we just get busy, you know, being vulnerable, having true, authentic friendships with people and put ma making network really friendships, you're going to end up doing business with people that you like. Everyone likes doing business with people they know, like, or trust. Well, mm -hmm. networking is tough, right? I don't know you. How could I trust you? Um it's really difficult uh, there, that to do all of those three things, know, like, and trust uh, in the first meeting. So this is a long <laughs> build the foundation, maybe three months, there's an ask for you. But other than that, just start collecting friendships. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I know we touched on a lot of it, the attendee experience, but if you're an event organizer listening to this, it's, it's really all about the attendees. So everything that we talked no. about, you know, people mm -hmm. actually going and living that, you know, that experience, going to the event and everything, you have to take that in consideration when planning it out. Cause that's part of your experience, not just the content, the, the performer, whatever it may be. It's, it's everything. So, yeah. yeah. And to, to that, you know, what I really appreciate about you guys is your standards are, are out of control. You know, when we're talking to the view stub team, they are obsessing about the user experience. How's it going to look? What are they going to do? What's the value? I need more value. So uh, I really appreciate that you guys are scrutinizing every aspect of the user journey as they go in and become an attendee and even on the backside, though. So kudos to you for being on the leading edge of, of their experience. Uh, thank you. Attend <laughs> attendees are the only thing that matter. Uh, I say it all the time. Matters. Organizers mm -hmm. need to get out of their own way uh, and realize that the event is not for them. It's for the attendees and everything. Every decision is how does my attendee going to experience this? What journey can I take them through? And is, is that experience going to help me achieve the objective of my event? And then why they bought the ticket? Is it going to, mm -hmm. is it designed for that? So, um, well, dude, this is awesome. Uh, yeah. I know we, I know, and, and I know we've touched on a couple, but I, I do want to give you the opportunity out of curiosity and things like that. Uh, what, what's, what's HIO looking like over the next couple of years? What, I know you guys are pivoting. You were going organizer. Now we're going companies. What's it look like? What's your journey look like? This is your shameless, selfish kind of plug <laughs> moment. Uh, yeah, no worries. 
Um, so, so right now we we're finding a really sensational demand with large event companies that put on events and trade shows and conferences, and they're looking to add a real time social dimension. So they resell our product out to their clients, uh, similar to, to view stuff and others. But what, what we recently filed a patent and we expedited it too. So we're hoping to hear back shortly. Um, what it, what it actually covers is a more broad set of claims that we can, we can actually turn the front end of any website, any website in existence into its own self-contained social community. So uh, we're, we're definitely in the event space. We're looking to grow deeper and kind of establish deeper roots with our event companies. Um, but long term, this can actually be used over any website. So if you any any time you're going to a website for ideas or information or advice, you can launch the Hia widget, engage in real time, see actually for the first time ever, you can expose the front end of traffic, the front end of traffic on the website to connect and build friendships. It's not for every website, uh, but for those with community building aspirations, it's, it's spot on. So that's one thing. And eventually, I think uh, just in the next couple of months here, we're gonna be rolling out a Chrome extension for attendees so that even if their event company or their event organizer has not gone so far as to partner with Hio, they can always launch the Chrome extension over any event experience and use Hio to network. Um, just us kind of pushing and pulling in that market. Wow, that's really cool. I love hey, it. I'm, I'm excited for it. I like it. Anything to make my life easier as an event organizer uh, and that actually drives impact, uh, inevitably, which means more revenue people, um, <laughs> will inevitably help. So yeah, I mean, I. I, uh, Patrick, you got anything else uh, for our man here? I mean, I, yeah, this is a value uh, to go off of um, you know what J where Jason is heading. You know, it still works really great with what ViewSub is doing. We tell a lot of people about Hio when they want to take their networking to the next level. Our platform actually works with the Hio plugin Hover, and soon it's going to work even more seamlessly. Um, we already have you know a big agency client coming on board that's going to get set up and whatnot, and it's. It's just, it's such a compatible product. That's why I was like, we got to have them on the show, not only because of the networking aspect, but just because of the synergy between the companies that we still have. So, yeah. And you guys will be seeing more of HIO. That, what that means is basically you're going to be seeing more of uh, Jason and HIO over here uh, going forward. So, hopefully. Yeah. And if you're a brand out there or a small business owner, literally uh, what we're talking about is in 60 seconds or less, you can spin up a completely branded, customizable widget grab one snippet of code, plug it into your website and turn that into its own self-contained social community. Uh, but we're doing that same thing for events um, and trying to make that as seamless as possible. I love it. So Jason, where can everyone find you, connect with you, learn about this and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, well they can uh, definitely go to hiosocial.com. Uh, there's links to us, our, our team there. Again, hiosocial.com, hit us up on social as well. Uh, and anyone who's listening to this, if they wanna search for me on LinkedIn, I would love to connect. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, we appreciate you, greatly appreciate you being the first guest on our show. Okay. Um, so hopefully just it was a good experience for you. Yeah, uh, we just been our ears off. Definitely. Really. It's, yeah, it's just been me and Patrick <laughs> rambling sometimes. So we're excited to have this string of guests uh, for going forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. But yeah, um, as always, guys, this, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. That was episode eight of Event Masters. Uh, go ahead and like us, comment, and share us on all the social medias. Right now, it is time uh, for the giveaway. The winner of the last giveaway, Patrick, was actually Michelle McNabb. So, uh, Michelle, we're going to have to do something you. special for her uh, because she was the winner. That's who won. Um, so we'll think of something cool for you to do for you, Michelle, since you're already hooked up with us and everything like that. Make sure you get with us, get with Patrick, get myself. Um, and so... This is this week's episode. The rules have not changed. If you go ahead and share this video and uh, like us on all social medias and go ahead and I'm going to add one. You need to go leave us a five star review um, on uh, Spotify or Apple Music. Either one. Let us know. Uh, you do that and you will be entered in to win the annual organizer package for ViewStub. So uh, as always, uh, share the video, like us on social five-star review on one of our podcast platforms, which we will drop below. So uh, with that being said, episode eight of Event Masters is in the wraps. Appreciate your time here, Jason and Patrick and I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks everyone. Event Masters.